Viewer discretion is advised. Coming up next on Your World. I'm sitting here like, whoa, slow down. I seen demons walking in my house in and out like I see y'all today. I mean, just like nothing. Did that have anything to do with you wanting to accept uh, positions and a place in the occult? I heard a voice say, put it on, I put it on. And from there, my life began, I lost my childhood. Satan has a strategy for every believer's downfall, but the believer doesn't seem to have a strategy to fight against the devil. I was able to transfer different principalities and different demons from one location to another. You know, if I can stop you from getting to the cross, I accomplished my mission. and welcome to a very special and somewhat shocking edition of Your World. You know, every October, kids dress up in costumes and go out trick-or-treating for Halloween. This season usually brings with it a heightened curiosity about the dark side, witches, warlocks, and things that go bump in the night. Well, no matter what you think of the practice of Halloween, this much is true about it. The dark side it's real. And friends, it's more active than you ever knew. Let's face it, the search for supernatural power is not new. People have been experiencing and dealing with the occult and spiritual darkness for generations. And yet what's alarming is how accepted these practices have become. And folks, the disturbing trend of this interest in the dark side has captured and is right now destroying our young people. Several years ago, an alarming study was released reporting that 73% of America's youth has engaged in at least some form of psychic activity or witchcraft. Fast forward, and now movies and TV shows openly condition our kids to occult every day. Wiccan groups are promoted in middle and high schools, and the reports of popular music artists' involvement with Movements like the Illuminati are all too frequent to keep ignoring. We cannot stick our heads in the sand and discount this dangerous trend going right under our noses. But how we respond as Christians to the dark side is a question that the church is now asking. Well, I'm going to ask uh, you to get ready, put your seatbelts on, because I'm gonna introduce you to someone who completely sold himself to the occult and used to call the devil his father. But through the miraculous power of God, this same man was saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. And now he's sounding the alarm, warning people of the deceptiveness of the occult, and more importantly, how to keep our loved ones out of the devil's grip. Stay tuned because you don't wanna miss one minute of today's broadcast, right here on Your World. Changing one life, time after time. Oh Lord, we do it all for you. Through the trials I see. Welcome back, everybody. You know, from an early age, our next guest was initiated into the occult through his father's family. In his teens, he completely sold his soul to the devil through blood sacrifice. And by young adulthood, he was in training to be a high priest in the satanic cult. And he is here with us today on the Your World program. This story is very real. And we're gonna talk about the real dangers of the occult and how he found his way back out of the darkness. Please help me, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show today, John Ramirez.
to our show. Welcome, John. So glad to have you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We call it your world because we get the opportunity of having awesome guests like you to come and take us on a journey so that we can really see the realities of things that we just may not be familiar with. You know, the Bible makes it very clear and it talks about Satan. But in this day and time, John, there are a lot of people that don't believe that, that there's a devil. It talks about principalities, powers, wicked spirits in heavenly places. It talks about demonic forces. Even Jesus rebuked the devil when he was negatively influencing one of his disciples to say some things that didn't line up with the, with, with the plan of Jesus Christ. And I, yet sometimes it's just so important to me for people to understand that if we say that God is real, then what are we saying when Satan is not real in the lives of people? And so I'd like for you to take us into your world or that world, that journey that you went on, and let's start with the impact of how you were treated and how you were raised. Do you feel like um, there was something missing there that you didn't get what you needed when you were raised up? And did that have anything to do with you wanting to accept uh, positions and a place in the occult? You know, I, I think in my life growing up, I, I, I grew up with a father that he was a, he was a warlock. He was a devil worshiper. And my, my side of my father's fa family was all devil worshippers. We believe in Santeria. We believe in uh, the occult. We believe in the demonic church. My father was, uh, you know, the saddest thing to have in the house is a father, and he's still absent. And my father was absent. My father was more, more his attention was more to devil worshiping and his family and his kids. And I was the biggest kid. So he'll send me down to the devil worship shop to buy stuff. And I would come back and, and I couldn't get it right because I missed this. I was nervous and stuff like that. He would call me names and, and not good names, by the way. He would call me names and stuff like that. I didn't bring the right ingredients. I didn't bring the right candle. I didn't bring the right flowers. I didn't bring the right portions and stuff like that because he could do his ceremonies. And I can see through the glimpse of the door how my father would transform into a, a monster. And then come home, come home on the weekends because my father had an alcohol problem. And come home on the weekends and beat my moms. And I seen this, 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 I seen demons walking in my house in and out like I see y'all today. I mean, just like nothing. And, uh, and so I started to pray to the devil in the middle of the night. I said, I, I, was, I would call out for Jesus, but Jesus never showed up. So I would pray. I said, it would, you know, kill my dad, kill my dad. Because, you know, the abuse was so much. The silent pain in my house was so tremendous. So, so one, day my, we, my, one day my father got shot for a woman in the face that was in his when he had a good wife home. My father died at the age of 33. So the devil said, no, you need to take his place. And at the age of eight years old, I remember I was in a schoolyard, this, this from, the, from, the, from the second heaven, a, a, a necklace filled with different colors. And I heard a voice say, put it on. I put it on. And from there, my life began. I lost my childhood. I lost my, 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 my young childhood. I became, I became a part of a demon world that was so real you can touch it. John, was this around the time that that issue happened with that tarot card when you were eight? Yes. Tell the us about the that. tarot card, it, it, it's a funny thing because I, I, my mom didn't want to go. And my aunt was very persuasive to my mom saying, you can need to go tarot card, tarot card. And tarot card is very dangerous. I mean, that is just like poison. That is, that is so demonic, tarot cards, by the way. And uh, they were, so my mom went. My mom was a people pleaser. She went. And when she got there, uh, the whole situation happened. And when she got there, the, 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 the witch focused on me. And she said to me, hey, um, th this young man needs to get a surgery. He needs to get the, 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 he needs to be initiated because of the simple fact that I was going to lose my eyesight. So my mom saw her furniture to get $250 to initiate me to the dark side, not knowing. And I, and for that, I just fell into that world for 25 years and to the age of 35. From eight years old, at eight years old, I was going to demon church. Instead of going to a Christian church, I was going to demon church at eight years old, trying to know demons and principalities and colors and how demons transfer from one region to another, how the devil, the patterns of the cycles of the enemy operates in the spirit realm. And learn spiritual warfare. Because we don't learn holiness, we learn spiritual warfare. Yeah. What was um, some of the specific things that was used to pull you all the way in? I, 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 think, I think the acceptance, the love, the, our superficial love that, that is there. I mean, there's no, there, there's no genuine love but the love of Jesus Christ. We know that. So it's a superficial love, the acceptance, the, the, the situation, everything will be fine. The, 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 the stuff that they promise you, uh, the stuff that they, uh, the, devil is, the devil is like a microwave. He, he just gives you temporary stuff. 
that make you feel like your life is fulfilled, your life has meaning, you have wow. life purpose. And it's just like smoke mirrors in, in there. So it's, 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 it's what the Bible says, he's the great deceiver, right? Oh, big time. I mean, we talk about, he had a PhD doing that. Did you, during that time and during that process, did you think, well, that there's something wrong with this? Because I know you've, you've been around it that long. You, you'd seen your father do it. Your, your eyes were obviously open to the, the realm of the spirit, you know. A lot of believers, for example, you know, there's this thing called the discerning of spirits, and we think it means being nosy about what somebody else is know. Literally, the discerning of spirits is having your eyes open into the realm of the spirit where you can see spiritual things. And, and, and a lot of Christians, I don't know what it is, they, they, they think it's discerning of spirits, I, I can discern your thoughts, but it's actually having your spiritual eyes open and you can see that. And having seen all of that and experienced all of that, and knowing that, you know, this is something else. I mean, did it just, the impact of, this is wrong. Was that in your conscience or were you just so used to it? Yeah, you know, I, I think that the, the thing is that the devil knows how to dress things up a way that, that, that he introduced it to people as a cultural thing. Ah. See, so, so my mama did it, my daddy did it, uh, my grandmother did it. I've seen people light candles. So it, it became a cultural thing. And to you so deep in it, and then you start seeing the reality of it. You start seeing the side to what the devil's saying, and you can't get out unless you want to have a premature death spirit on you. Mm. I believe at the age of eight, when I was initiated already, I was in the devil's side already. I was being groomed to be a high-ranked devil worshiper, you know, to the point that I, at the age of 35, I was a general in the kingdom of darkness. I was a general. I can control regions in the spirit realm. I can do stuff in the spirit realm, north, south, east, and west. I would actually project. I would do all these things. I know how to close down neighborhoods. I know how to close down churches that were not operating in the spirit. I know how to take over regions, neighborhoods. I know how to recruit Christians that were lukewarm into the dark side. I know all that stuff. I know Are y'all getting this? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm sitting here like, whoa, slow down. <laughs> I, I want to go back to this place of um, controlling regions because we, we've heard that before, controlling regions, churches. And I think the question that as a, as a high priest in that area at the time, John, what, what sort of things were you permitted to do? And, and I know you, you're, you're, you're going through the list right now, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm talking about like uh, sacrifices, some of the things that we, just the average person would never attribute to something demonic. We would just say, well, that just kind of happened because it happened. And I think that's really the, the deception amongst Christians, the fact that, oh, that just happened because it just happened. We have a saying now, it is what it is. Right, right. But when I'm talking to you right now and I'm hearing, no, it, 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 it's, not, it's not that it just happened, just happened. There are forces behind. Oh, absolutely. Tell us about that. Yeah, I mean, you look at the situations today, the riots and all that stuff. So, so I was able to transfer different principalities and different demons from one location to another. So bring the spirit of hate, discord, division, bring all these uh, uh, racial uh, uh, situations. So, so because the shedding of the blood, you know, shedding of the blood, shedding of, of, of a premature death, you know, if I can stop you from getting to the cross, I accomplish my mission. So my job was to shut down the church uh, and, and taking over regions, whereas if I can control the region, I can control the people. I didn't have to go one-on-one. -on -one. I can lock down the region, control the uh, region, put a, 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 a premature death spirit there, put an infirmity spirit in that region. Sounds to me like the devil has a strategy. Oh, big time. I mean, maybe the, the Bible says Jesus that the kingdom of God is not divided. They run like ranks. So, so we are the ones that... Uh, and somehow the church is someone uh, lacking spiritual warfare. We get trained to do holiness, but we don't get trained spiritual warfare. When you're in the devil's side, you get trained to do spiritual warfare, but you don't get trained to be holy. Wow. So I know both, by the way. Yeah, but you, and, and I'm so glad you're on my side. <laughs> Amen, you know. Uh, you know, the, uh, one of the amazing things that it dawned on me one day that Satan has a strategy for every believer's downfall, but the believer doesn't seem to have a strategy to fight against the devil. You know why? Because a lot of times, uh, Pastor, a lot of times we are on the defense. See, I'm not on the defense anymore. I'm not a defense kind of Christian. I'm out of the box Christian. So I'm on the offense. I, I tell the devil, wait right there, I'm coming for you. 
I, I mean, he got me fired up over here like, what? Because, because we have authority. Yes, we do. And a lot of things that don't happen in our life or do happen is because as a believer, I am not aware of my authority. Exactly. And if you can keep a believer from understanding his authority. Ignorant. And keep him ignorant mm -hmm. and blind. Blind. Then he can't be successful. And he'd just be a mediocre Christian. Dude, y'all need to listen to this. <laughs> y'all need, need to hear what I'm saying. I am not trying to be a mediocre Christian. I want to open a can of whoop on the devil often. <laughs> often. And, and you're saying we have that authority to do that. I got power. I have authority. I can change my world by speaking into my world. Proverbs 18, 21 said, whatever comes out of your mouth, because you see, the devil's after your words. So Say the devil again. has Say legal rights. Again. Say that again. The that devil's again. after your words. And the devil has legal right over darkness. So if whatever comes out, maybe you speak divorce, believe me, the devil's going to bring it to you. And if you speak death over your kids, the devil's going to bring it to you because he already got legal rights over that. If you don't break it, uproot it, and the, 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 the divorce it, it's over. Man, so, I'm about to so, shout over here. So, so, <laughs> so, you know, I, uh, and, I, and I think it, it's worth really looking at this. Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon formed against me shall prosper, and every tongue that rises up against me thou shalt condemn. This is your heritage, and your righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. I don't know what it is about the church where we assume that a scripture is saying something, maybe we're not looking at it, but in that scripture, it's not just no weapon formed against you will prosper, as, to, as if to say the circumstance you're in right now it won't prosper. We're not paying attention to the other side of that. It says in every tongue that rises up against you. Well, what is he talking about? Words. Mm -hmm. He's talking about words. He's talking about if you allow words to settle in your heart, then those words, especially if they're wrong words, will form weapons in your life. Yes. But if you will recognize those wrong words, and every word that comes up against you and condemn those words. When somebody says, you know what? You're probably gonna die of cancer. You say, I condemn that word. I have life and with long life will I live. And, and, or somebody says, well, you know what? You're broke all your life. You're like, no way am I gonna be broke. God called me to prosper. Well, people think that we, you know, we're just going a little overboard because they're just words. And John, you're saying it's not just words. Would you agree that these words, if received and conceived in the heart of a man, can be the very weapon Satan is using against you? Oh, yeah. I can, use, I can give you a form of, of my previous life in witchcraft, right? That I would sit down with the devil all night long like I'm, I'm, when, when the church was sleeping. Right, I was sitting with the devil all night long talking. I sometimes stay up all night long and talk to Jesus, you know, because if I did with the devil, I can do with Jesus, amen. And so, so I would, I would, I would, the devil said, "Well, don't attack him." I didn't have to buy a coffin. I didn't have to get human bones to do witchcraft on you and, and, and stand down the bones. That's what I would do. And I, I didn't have to buy a 21 candle. That's a 21 rose to the dark side and put it there to try to destroy your life. But the, the devil said, "Don't do that today. Just speak words. Speak words. Speak death. Speak words. Negative. Close down. Divorce. Speak death. Speak cancer. Speak this. Speak that. And to the life that then the demon will carry those words over, and the demon will stop penetrating down your mind. The Bible said, "Renew your mind." Daily. So if you're not renewing your mind daily, those words will sit around and then you start entertaining those words. And if you start entertaining words, you give them power. That's so powerful. It's like I have somebody here on the show today who's confirming 30 years of what I've been teaching and trying to tell people, listen, words are important. Decree a thing and it shall come to pass. Well, the same thing is true on the opposite end. Decree a thing and it shall come to pass. So have you ever dealt with an individual in the power of prayer and the power that prayer has against the forces of darkness? Oh, I mean, I mean one, one thing, Pastor, one, one thing I tell you, I love to pray because I know it works. So, 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 so prayer works. So I know because when I used to actually project and leave my body and I used to go into neighborhoods to curse neighborhoods, that the, the Christians, see, there's two kind of prayers. You can pray in the normal and the natural. That's one prayer. That don't work. But if you know how to pray in the spirit. So praying in the spirit, Christians would lock their neighborhoods down and I wouldn't be able to curse their neighborhoods.
You see, because one thing you have to understand, you can quote the scripture, you know, all, 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 I can do all things through Christ Jesus. You can quote no weapon formed against me will prosper. But are you living it? Because quoting something don't mean you're living it. And living it, the devil knows between you quoting and you living it. I'm living it. And bring it on, devil, because you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> That's it. That's it. <laughs> so how, how did you begin to transform or move away from the occult? I mean, that's a high-ranking position. I was a general, like you said, in the kingdom of darkness in regards of sacrifices, dr drinking animal blood, killing animals, um, rituals with human bones, cemeteries, you name it, I did it all to get to the ranks. And the only thing that bought me, uh, the only thing that bought me was Jesus showed up one day. And I was watching, uh, I was watching a crazy TV show. I'm not going to say what it was, but... And I heard the voice of God for the first time. And I was sitting there from a night recruiting people from the dark side. I came from a club and I was sitting there listening to the show. And I heard the voice of God said to me, my son, I'm coming soon. Calling me son when I was, a, I was worth nothing. I'm coming soon, what are you gonna do with your life? And I thought I couldn't believe the voice because I knew all the voice of all the devils and demons and everything. And then two weeks later, uh, I'm sitting in my bed. This man called Jesus was trying to warm me in to this side, and the devil's, I was between two worlds. And I, I went, I was going into a sleep, a deep sleep, a deep sleep, like anesthesia sleep. And all I remember I said was, if you're bigger than my daddy, the devil, that I served 25 years, you better show up. And Jesus took the Pepsi challenge. He showed up and he took me to hell. And I really went to hell. I know how long I was there. I know there was a terrifying place. And I, I was walking through the portals of hell. And every time you step on hell, you step on the ground, it's like marshmallow. There was, there's no, and, and you can hear the wailing, you can hear the cries, you can feel the fire, you can feel all these things going on at one time. And the, only, the first thing you, you, when you go to hell, any human being, the first thing they go to hell, the first thing they say, I don't belong here. And those are my words. And, and when the devil showed up to grab me, I got marks in my body here. That show, if you see this mark, that's when I sold my soul to the devil. I got the marks here. I got the pentagram crowded into my flesh. But the biggest mark is in my heart is Jesus Christ. And, and amen. So when I came back, when, when, when the devil went to grab me in hell, he showed up in hell. He said, if I can keep you here, you won't wake up on the earth. And when he went to grab me, the cross of Jesus Christ in pain hell appeared, the cross. I don't know how it appeared. I had a pair of shorts and a t-shirt. And he appeared. And, and when he went to grab me, the cross hit him. And he melted like wax. He couldn't even, he couldn't even deal with the cross. And when I came back from, from hell, I bent my knee and I gave my life to Jesus Christ. I knew that God was God. There was no denying that. I, um, I have to, my emotions right now celebrate because God is real. God is real. And if His grace can save a high a former high priest of Satan. And if his blood is strong enough to show up when he didn't deserve it, when he, when he didn't earn it, but the unmerited favor of God, his grace showed up anyway and say, John, I'm coming back soon. How are you going to live your life? And to say, John, out of a pit, out of a place where, you know, he calls Satan his father. Ladies and gentlemen, that same grace is available to you right now, and God will save your life. He'll save your life. Satan is real. Our young people and others are dabbling on the dark side in witchcraft or other psychic activity. There is a desire for the supernatural. Just look at the growing trend of TV shows, movies, and music glorifying the mystic. It's apparent that witchcraft and the occult is on the rise. As Christians, it's a problem we can't afford to ignore. 
We must recognize that the devil is determined to deceive and destroy our children and loved ones. Are you prepared? Understanding how Satan operates is your first line of defense, but you also need to know how to put on the whole armor of God and take control to protect yourself and your family. If you're dealing with constant sickness, if your family is being tormented by troubles, or if you found yourself stuck in a rut and unable to get ahead, you might be under attack from Satan and not even realize it. You are in spiritual warfare with the enemy. The devil's not just some fantasy or myth you see in today's media. The truth is, Satan is real, and his goal is to steal your peace, rob you of your joy, and stop you from receiving the rich rewards God has in store for you. In today's interview, you met John Ramirez and learned how he allowed Satan to completely take over his life. John became a high priest in the occult, entering into a blood covenant with the devil, where his chief assignment was to cast others into his kingdom of darkness. What Satan didn't know was that God had plans for John, just like he has plans for you. Dr. Dollar has put together some powerful resources to help you take authority over the Satan and live the blessed life God has given you. Call right now and get your copy of the Truth About Satan CD series. In this must-have teaching, Dr. Dollar will not only reveal the lies and tricks of Satan, but also how you can now have complete dominion over him. And if you call right now, you'll also get a special bonus, the illuminating DVD of Dr. Dollar's interview with John Ramirez. You'll discover even more eye-opening information about how the devil is trying to destroy you and what you and your family can do to stop him. All this for your donation of only $30 or more. Remember, you have the power of your words to not only stop what the devil's doing, but also to take command and hold authority over your life. Call right now to get this special offer, Dr. Dollar's powerful CD series, The Truth About Satan, plus the uncut two-part DVD of today's powerful interview, now in its entirety. And when you sow this seed into Creflo Dollar Ministries, you'll also become a part of a movement of believers who are taking the message of God's grace around the globe to those who need it most. That's what your donation of $30 or more will do. Don't go one more day living unprotected from the evil the devil has planned for you and your family. It's time to take authority over your life. Call right now. Next week on Your World. He's a radical fireball for Jesus Christ, amen? She called me up and she told me, oh, you traitor. Because my daughter was sworn to the witch, to the dark side too. What were some of the challenges, if any, that you had to deal with? That I would sleep during the day because at night the demons would come for me. All this torment, all the attack, grabbing me, choking me, uh, losing my eyesight again. Did the demons come through that or is that just hearing and we're hearing demonic stuff? Stay connected with me on social media. Head to Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram and tell me what you think about today's program. I'd love to hear from you. Through Creflo Dollar Global Missions, we are providing food, clothing, crucial supplies, and the Word of God to people in the most remote regions of the world. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into billions of homes all across the globe.